So thanks for joining me. And again, I'm joined by Andy. Andy, let's start with an introduction. Hi. So I'm a software architect at a cloud communications company. Great. And in thank you. And in the previous conversation we had, we talked about public cloud, private cloud. We talked about being multi-tenancy and, and one of the benefits of that um, environmental and, and just scale and so on and, and therefore cost. Um, but there's another benefit too, and that's to the release process. So um, I know we do marketing releases three times a year uh, where we wrap things up together and we do that so it's not to flood customers with a lot of releases, but actually how often do we release um, the solution? That's a complicated question. And the answer really is as often as we can. And different components of our architecture will release at different rates. We have components that are releasing on a weekly cadence, and we have other components that are releasing multiple times a day. Okay. Um, so I guess the weekly components we're thinking, you know, that the solutions that our customers would see um, if they were visible to them. So things like the um, the actual application software. But what are we releasing then multiple times a day? So we're releasing. Actually, it's it's not just the bits that you see that we release weekly. There are um, small. We're trying to break up the application into very small deployable chunks that we can release as often as possible. So it could be um, the main web application um, has been around for a while. And typically, we will be releasing that on a weekly cadence with a, a very structured process. Mm -hmm. For the more modern components, we're really aiming to be releasing as often as we can. If we could. And if it was practical, we would be releasing that into production to our customers with every single line of code change that a developer makes. Every time they make a line of code change, I want them to commit it to the source tree. I want that to be built, go through an automated testing process and to be released into production. Wow. And that's the continuous integration, continuous development. And is, is what you were referring to there when we hear phrases like microservices? Exactly. Down. Right. Okay. So that's so when I hear the microservices architecture, uh, one of the benefits of that kind of architecture is this ability to release on a much more frequent basis. Exactly. That. Yes. Okay. So so we're releasing little and often. Um, often, then, does that reduce risk? I guess. That is one of the primary drivers for regular releases. Uh, the idea is, is if if I'm making little changes and deploying them out into production, inevitably, occasionally, no matter how good your testing process is, something may go wrong. Or even actually during the testing process, you may find that that last change that the developer made doesn't work for some reason. Now, the sooner that we can find that out, the easier it is to figure out what the problem has been. You can imagine if we were releasing once every six months mm -hmm. and we went through the testing and release process twice a year, what we would have is we would have six months of changes all rolled up into one release and we might find maybe there's a performance issue. We've now got six months worth of changes to try and figure out what on earth caused our performance issue. Whereas if it was every single commit and 20 minutes later, we can see there's a performance issue. We can make a really strong connection to the change that's just been made, understand it, roll it back, and um, understand and fix that problem. And I know, you know, if I was no longer there, um, when I was um, kind of running this process a few years ago, um, we never had such big changes. But if I'd been in charge of, of the process at a company that was doing a so-called big bang, mm -hmm. um, whether it's twice a year, once every three years, whatever. I mean, you would lose sleep for weeks because you'd be worried about oh my goodness, the night's coming, the day's coming, you know. And um, so customers, though, they do get kind of nervous sometimes about um, hearing that we release little and often. And I think the reason they get nervous is they think, wow, we can't cope with that degree of rate of change. But the reality is they don't see it. Um, and even when the changes are 
user facing you know something that maybe they would see they don't until we're ready for them to see it um and unless they're beta testing so how do we do that so one of the things we're trying very hard to do during this kind of change process is we're trying to separate the release of the code into production to the availability of the feature so we want to get that code the, the changes the infrastructure changes the code changes into production and running and proven as soon as possible but we don't want that have that tied up with our customers seeing the change so a common technique for separating this is to use something called a release toggle Mm -hmm. And so what we will do is we will make the change to the change in behavior or whatever the change we want to do, but we will have it as an optional change that can be turned on and off. And that, that option is controlled via a toggle. And so what we will try and do is we will ideally for every change that we're making, we'll have a, a business reason. We're trying to fulfill a customer requirement and we'll be working with a customer that has that to prove out that requirement. So we'll release the change, but enable it to turn the toggle on just for that customer that wants that, wants that functionality. And that way we can roll out the customer facing change in a more business appropriate way than we, we deploy, the, deploy the change into our production architecture. So this ties in very nicely then to an understanding that all customers in this this environment that you're describing then and this architecture we've always had um, in in our company but um but all customers are first running the same code they're all on the same platform yep it's not only the same code it's the same servers or virtual servers or virtual absolutely servers. and it's just it's just their data that's segregated um because it's all the same software, it's all about configuration. Yep. Um, so customers, or we configure the solution for our customers. Um, as a customer, then I don't need to be worried that I'm going to be buried with these, mass these very frequent releases. Because what I do get um, is communication three times a year saying, here's what's coming. Um, you can get ready. You can train your users and staff. Um, and we put a lot of effort into that. Um, but I think what you're describing ties in quite nicely with another conversation I'm having, which is customers can get on board with pilot programs and they do that through the community portal. How does that work? So we have a product management team who are collecting feature ideas from a variety of sources through the community portal, through direct communications with customers, mm -hmm. you know, through a variety of mechanisms. And what, what we're really looking for when we're, when we've found something that we think will fulfill customers' needs is we're looking for early adopters to work with. And uh, our product team will be reaching out to the customers who have communicated those business requirements to us to try and work with them to see if they are suitable for becoming early adopters. And that's actually a great segue to another video that I'm doing with one of the product owners. And we're going to talk about that process in more detail. But for now, Andy, it's been great talking with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.